the Liang Province Rebellion. In the year 184, when the Yellow Turban Rebellion rose up, two separate Xiang tribes also took this chance to rise up against their masters. This outbreak snowballed into a greater problem for the Han Empire, as eventually it removed them from power in the northwest of China. These initial disturbances grew to have a lasting effect on the non-Han Chinese people from the region and their struggle for freedom for centuries to come. In the winter of 184, reports came of a group of Xi'an people who were causing trouble in Beidi and Anding commanderies. Another group then also appeared in two counties in the upper Yellow River Valley. It's not known for sure, but presumed that the two groups acted independently from one another, and that they both sought to overthrow the Han-appointed officials due to years of misrule and corruption. The auxiliary of loyal barbarians from Huang Zhong were sent to put down the uprisings, but this unit had many Xi'an peoples and also some lesser Yuezhi members. The Yuezhi were an ancient nomadic people who occupied an arid grassland in the western reaches of Liang province. After their major defeat at the hands of the Xiongnu, the Yuezhi people were split into two groups, the Greater Yuezhi and the Lesser Yuezhi. They migrated in separate directions, with some of the Lesser Yuezhi's reported involvement in the Liang province rebellion. When the auxiliary unit was at the military camps of Lianzhu, they mutinied against their superiors where they killed Ling Zheng, the colonel protector of the Xi'an. The unit joined in with the two groups of insurgents, who by this point had united together. Bei Gong Boyu and Li Wenhu, two now ex-auxiliary soldiers, took command over the united rebels. With this, the rebels now controlled a band of territory along the Yellow River, near Dideo in Longxi Commandery. Within two weeks they had mobilised to Jincheng Commandery and captured its capital city, which they then used as their main stronghold for future rebel operations. They might have had inside knowledge of the fact that the local governor and inspector of Liang province, Zhuo Chang, had embezzled the funding that was allocated for the city's defence force. This meant there was no relief force sent to retake the city. Chen Yi, the Grand Administrator, went to visit the rebels in order to strike a deal to free the captured hostages, but he was killed upon arriving. Two of the hostages, Bian Zhang and Han Sui, were persuaded to join in with the uprising. Their influence and reputation legitimised the rebels' cause in the eyes of many, and they soon grew a wider popular support. Zhuo Chang's headquarters was to be the next target for the rebel movement, so they soon made moves to besiege his location in Ji County. Many Han generals refused to go to his aid, until He Shun, a noteworthy and successful general, powerfully persuaded them to carry out their duty. The siege was then lifted, and Zhuo Chang was replaced by Song Ni by the Han government. The replacement was a devout Confucian, who thought the rebellion could only be thwarted by teaching the people the classics of filial piety. He proposed his plan to the imperial court, against the advice of his junior officials, whereafter he was promptly dismissed and replaced by Yang Yong. Under his governance, things didn't change much, and eventually the rebels came back again to besiege the local officials in various locations. A man with some experience in quelling Xi'an rebellions was attacked at an office in Hanyang Commandery by Dian Yu, a rebel chieftain. He Shun once again led his army to reinforce the area, but the combined Han forces were severely defeated, with its leaders forced to flee. After this victory for the rebels, it became clear that the local authorities could no longer stop them. By the year 185, the rebels numbered in tens of thousands and marched towards Chang'an, which forced the central government to respond. The famous conqueror of the Yellow Turbans, Huang Fu Song, was appointed to defend the city. For four months, nothing noteworthy happened, apart from his dismissal due to the eunuchs back at the imperial court slandering him for his lack of activity. The destabilisation of Liang province by this point had a massive drain on the Han treasury. To support the war, they had increased the taxes and also forced the people into manual labour. Sui Lai, the excellency over the masses, suggested that they outright abandon the province to focus on internal affairs. He was countered by the gentleman consultant Fu Shi, who made a passionate speech which condemned this idea, whilst highlighting the importance of Liang as a frontier province. He pointed out that if the barbarians control the area uncontested, that they will soon be the greatest threat to the Han Empire. He called Sui Lai out for being happy to abandon over 3,000 miles of land, and stated, if Sui Lai fail to realise the consequences of his policy, he is a fool. If he knows what he is saying, he is a traitor. Emperor Ling was so impressed with his speech that he rejected Sui Lai's proposal and assigned Fu Shi to the frontier as the administrator of Hanyang Commandery. After Huang Fu Song was relieved from his position at Chang'an, the High Minister Zhang Wen was sent to replace him with Dong Zhuo, Xu Shen and Sun Jian as his subordinates. 
More than a hundred thousand in men and horses clashed with Bian Zhang and Han Sui's rebel force in a number of inconclusive battles. In the eleventh month, a shooting star appeared to fall on the rebels' camp, which threw the superstitious soldiers into a panic. Dong Zhuo took advantage of this and led a fierce attack against their camp, which forced Han Sui and Bian Zhang to retreat near Ji Cheng Commandery. With the stalemate broken, Zhang Wen formed two pursuit forces. Xu Shen was sent with 30,000 men to attack Yu Zhong, whilst Dong Zhuo was also given 30,000 troops to pursue the old Xiang auxiliary force. Sun Jian, who was serving under Zhou Shen, was aware that both rebel and Han forces were overstretched. He suggested to target the enemy supply line, but Sun Jian was ignored, and in turn, Xu Shen had his own supply line attacked, causing them to become scattered. Dong Zhuo didn't fare any better, although he did manage to keep his army intact. His pursuit force found themselves surrounded by Xiang troops, which caused their food supplies to dwindle. Dong Zhuo dammed up the river to make it appear he was catching fish, but actually crossed over it to escape. By the time the Xiang learned of this, the river was too deep for them to pursue. The Han army's response had successfully halted the Xiang advance, but they were unable to regain any power near the upper Yellow River, with much of the surrounding area becoming contested ground. By the winter of 186, Bian Zhang had passed away from illness. Bei Gong Bo Yu and Li Wen Hu had also been killed in an internal feud. The newly appointed inspector of Liang province, Geng Bi, saw this as a good time to re-establish control through military means, without the aid from other parts of the country. Fu Xi contested his plans, as he felt the army was not familiar enough with Geng Bi to fight with good morale, but the plan went ahead regardless. In 187, Geng Bi attacked Long Shi commandery with an army he had mustered from six different commanderies. Han Sui had previously captured Long Shi commandery after its grand administrator defected, but Han Sui was no longer in the area. Geng Bi had also recently appointed a known corrupt official to the area, which upset the lower and upper class alike. When the Han army reached Long Shi's capital, Dideo, another mutiny broke out within the ranks. The corrupt official and Geng Bi were soon killed, and once more the mutineers joined in with the rebels, this time under command of a Dideo native named Wang Guo. He led his force east, and began to siege a city which was under the administration of Fu Shi. As he treated the people well and was respected, the rebels became hesitant to fight him. The rebels urged him to either flee or surrender, but Fu Shi was determined to defend Longxi to the death. His supplies and troops continued to deplete until he finally launched a desperate charge where he was killed in battle. After the fighting, one of Geng Bi's subordinates, Ma Teng, brought his troops to join in with Han Sui and the rebels, where they announced Wang Guo as their leader. They then proceeded to raid the area around Chang'an. For the first time, the rebels had extended their influence throughout all of Liang province, which led to Zhang Wen being dismissed from his position, having failed to stop the rebellion. By 189, hopes to recover Liang province had all but been abandoned by the imperial court, with the area's defence forces being left to deal with incursions by themselves. Wang Guo led a major rebel force east, and began sieging Cheng Kang Castle, which is considered a gateway into Chang'an. Wang Fu Song was given authority over the armies, with himself and Dong Zhuo each being given 20,000 men. When they arrived, Dong Zhuo thought it best they relieve the city as soon as possible. Wang Fu Song disagreed though, citing Chen Kang's impressive defences, and decided to wait it out until the rebels grew tired. After 80 days and zero progress, Wang Guo pulled back to allow his men to rest, which is when Wang Fu Song called on them to give chase. Dong Zhuo opposed the pursuit citing military doctrine which states a retreating army should not be pursued. Wang Fu Song explained to him that Wang Guo's retreat was not organised nor planned, but instead a result of losing all will to fight. Dong Zhuo was left behind at the rear guard, whilst Wang Fu Song led his armies in a glorious victory, which recorded the Han forces cut off more than 10,000 heads. It's noted Dong Zhuo was embarrassed and angry towards Wang Fu Song, and bore a grudge against him from this point on. Wang Guo was not considered up to the task of leadership by Han Sui or Ma Teng, and so was deposed of after this loss. A former prefect was then elected to lead the Xiang rebels, but he died shortly after he took up his position. This led to infighting, with the rebels fracturing into three groups. Han Sui led a group in Ji Cheng, Ma Teng had followers in Wei Valley, and Song Jian had a group in Fu Han. By this point, the power dynamic of the Liang province rebellion had shifted from the Xiang and Yuezhi peoples to the turncoat Han officials. As such, the Xiang and Yuezhi initiators seemed to have quietly withdrew their support and played no further role in the rebellion. With the rebellion currently splintered and weakened, they were vulnerable to an attack, but disasters at the capital took the attention away from them. 
Emperor Ling had passed away without deciding on an heir. Full-scale fighting broke out in the city streets after He Jin was assassinated. Then Dong Zhuo led the frontier troops from Liang province to respond to these events. After Dong Zhuo had seized control of the Han government, the Liang province rebellion was seen as an outlying disturbance in regards to the fall of the Han Empire. As time went on, the three leaders of the rebellion groups became warlords in their own right. Song Jian proclaimed himself as the king of the sources of the river who will pacify Han. He distanced himself from outsiders and ruled over Fu Han and Hei Guan in isolated autonomy for almost 30 years. When Dong Zhuo needed assistance in dealing with the coalition against him, Han Sui and Ma Teng's forces legitimacy grew when he asked for their support. Later, after Dong Zhuo's death, Li Zhue and Guo Xi seized the emperor. The pair granted Han Sui and Ma Teng military titles within the Han government, hereby granting the Liang rebels official recognition. The relationships between them soon deteriorated. Han Sui and Ma Teng allied themselves with Liu Yan, and they looked to capture Chang An. Guo Xi and Fan Chao dealt a heavy blow to them where 10,000 men were killed. This, paired with the lack of supplies, spelt disaster for their allies. This prompted Han Sui to travel to meet with Fan Chao, and charismatically convinced him to call off the fighting, as they shared the same hometown. This enabled the allies to safely retreat. As the years went on, Ma Teng and Han Sui's friendship worsened, as they both wanted control over Liang province. Alternating periods of peace and warfare between the two factions became common. By the time that Tao Tao had scored a victory against Yuan Shao, Han Sui and Ma Teng had resorted to killing each other's wives and children. Things got so bad for Ma Teng that he fled to Tao Tao in Yi with most of his family. Here, he was kept in a gilded cage whilst Tao Tao brokered peace between the pair. They both donated troops to help in dealing with Yuan Shao's remnants. Two years later, Ma Teng's eldest son Ma Chao rose up in rebellion against Tao Tao. This led to the entire Ma clan in Yi being executed. When the Wei armies began to move against Zhang Lu and Han Zhong, a coalition was formed between Han Sui, Ma Chao, and Zhang Lu. The two forces clashed at Tong Pass, which resulted in Tao Tao's victory and the beginning of the end of autonomy in Liang province. Ma Chao went into hiding and won support from the local D tribes before attempting to recapture the city of Ji. But internal fighting and Zia Hao Yuan's arrival caused it to end in failure. Han Zhong soon fell to the Wei forces. Zia Hao Yuan was put in charge of the clean up operations of the remnant rebels, and Zhang Ji was put in charge of restoring the local governments. Zia Hao Yuan defeated a rebel force led by Han Sui in the year 214, and followed up his victory by campaigning through the D tribes, exerting his dominance over them. He made his way to Song Jian at Fu Han and captured his capital. Song Jian died, and then all the officials under him were executed. The next year, Han Sui also died, where Tao Tao received his head as a sign of submission by the remaining dissidents of Liang. After some 30 years, the power shift initialized by two separate Xi'an groups had finally been suppressed. Throughout this entire time, the trade routes from Liang to Central Asia had been locally and loosely controlled. When Tao Pi came into power, he reformed many commanderies in the northwest and officially reopened the trade routes in the year 222. Only a few minor uprisings happened in this time. Although Tao Pi's improvements on the infrastructure helped in Liang province, it was still less productive compared to when the Han Empire had it. Some commanderies like Song Jian's were outright abandoned, whilst land was also lost on the outskirts to barbarians. Han Chinese population in the region dwindled, and eventually was overtaken by Di and Xiang peoples who were sighted more towards the southern mountains. It was over a century until the Di and Xiang peoples united again with other nomadic tribes to overthrow their Jin dynasty overlords in what's known as the Sixteen Kingdoms period. This uprising echoes the events of the Liang province rebellion somewhat, as in both cases, the rebellions in the northwest contributed to the collapse of a great Chinese empire. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.